other agents or experienced agents can chime in. Okay. So I'm sure you heard on the street that when you're a new agent, you go to Keller Williams to learn what you need to learn, right? Because they have the best training. Everybody hear that? Who's heard that in the past? All right. Why do you think we have the training and we have the productivity coaching and the classes that we do? Yeah. To learn from experiences. Learn from experiences. Everybody should have three copies. A circle looking thing, a activity sheet that's filled out, and a blank activity sheet. I think I messed one up. Yeah. All right. That is kind of true, but the main thing behind that is Keller Williams seen a gap that was missing in the industry. Okay? So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight people in this class. Okay? Statistically, eight and a half agents out of ten fell out of the business in less than two years. Yep. Okay? Think about that. There's eight people here. So that means six and a half to seven people are not going to be in this business in two years. Who makes, what makes, who, does anybody feel good about that? Absolutely not. So Keller Williams said, okay, we need to try to fill that gap. We need to get some training. We need to put productivity in place. And that's what they started doing and created a model behind that. We created a model behind that. And that's why we have productivity coaching classes. Uh, and then behind that is a whole big leadership thing that is kind of self-development uh, to help you guys grow beyond the real estate part. Does that make sense? Okay, so eight and a half agents out of ten fail out of the business. They fail out of the business because they don't have the daily mindset or discipline to keep business going. Does that make sense? So what I did when I started going to a ton of le uh, leadership and as well as training with Cal Rams, I developed some systems and models for my team to simplify uh, the daily routine as well as paying attention to the numbers of lead generation. As I'm sure you guys hear it 10 times a day, lead generate, lead generate, lead generate, right? So in, in working with tw quite a few different agents and mentoring new agents coming into business, what I learned is that you don't want to do what I do, and she might not want to do what you do. Does that make sense? So lead generation isn't something that is systematic across the board, and you can just pick up the pen and paper and do what I do or what she does or what Brooke does. Does that make sense? Who was in Brooke's class yesterday? Okay. So when I was I was in Brooke's class uh, last week for something else, or week before for something else, and I picked up some odds. So I did something similar to this class, like I have a daily discipline class that I teach at different market centers. And I remember seven years, probably I think it was six years ago, when Brooke and Phyllis came over and I was teaching a little spot on part of a, of a, of a mini class about this. And what resonated with Phyllis, she, she, she had an aha, she's like, this is something that I didn't realize that I, I, I did one spoke coming into my business. And if that spoke goes away, what happens? And that was like epiphany, and then they changed some things. So, I am going to write on the board, Matt. Not that one. Not this one? That one's funky. That one's on the smartboard. Do you need help? I don't know clean it real well. Do you need help? No. Can I erase this? Mm hmm. Is that from your class? Mm hmm. So the Facebook class that was yesterday. It's the bottom, Jason. Huh? The bottom's broke. I need to fix that. I got tools in my truck. Okay. This sounds juvenile, but it's very, very visual for looking at it in a daily basis. <clears throat> All right. So the, the numbers. I don't want to say don't lie, but who's read the MRE book, the red book? Okay. The red book. 
So you're going to hear some, some experience agents chime in on this also. So marketing, what's the numbers for marketing to get a deal? Anybody know? Impressions, touches. Okay, so the book says it's 10. So now it's 8,000 to 10,000 to one deal. Prospecting is what? How many conversations of prospecting to get one deal? Conversations. Huh? Everybody should know these numbers. It's 20. 20 to 1. 8 to 10,000 to 1. And then networking, face to face, which is more of my good, belly to belly, I call it. What's the numbers? Five to one, okay? So I remember literally six months ago, somebody came to me and asked, and asked they said they had no business. Okay, let me hear you what's, it, what's 8,000? You have to touch your, your ad has to touch oh, 8,000 yeah. to 10,000 people? So marketing. So if you got, I should have went into the definition. The definition of marketing is like a post or a postcard or shopping carts or billboards, okay? That's marketing. Everybody, everybody understand that? Prospecting, who knows the definition of prospect? Having conversations. Okay, so you heard you heard the, the word several times of, of, of touches or, or, or lead, like, I call it touches, they say, say asking for business, right? So that's 20 conversations, does that make sense to you? So if we're gonna lie to ourselves, if we're filling out these spots in prospecting, and we say, well, I'm a prospect. Did you have 20 conversations yesterday and ask somebody for business? No. So if it's not that, it's smart. Does that make sense? Like she did a post for a Facebook. If I post a property, hey, coming soon, blah, blah, blah. That's not a prospect. If somebody makes a comment, hey, what's the price? And I go DM them and I'm like, hey, are you interested in that property at 123 Main Street? I would love to talk to you and see how I can help. You. That is a check mark, okay? Putting a post on Facebook is not, not, not a, 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 a check on people. So we're going to talk about that when we go to, to fill, our, fill our, uh, our business up, okay? Network, okay? And what is network? Do friends and girls. Uh, you get you know, when you talk to your friends or people that you know, and they, you go more to make fundraiser, for example, or go to a function. Go to a function. Go into a function, having a having a face to face belly to belly conversation. Does that make sense? That is that is network. Okay? That is having face to face conversations, or it could be also on the phone, like you said, past business or so. So, yeah, everybody we're talking, we're even digging into this deeper about personalities. But I'm the type of person to pick pick the phone up to one of my class VIPs, I call them core associates, and say, "Hey, this is Gizzy. I'm not getting off the phone until I get my." My effort referral or to you give me that name you promised me last month. Does that make sense? So that is what I'm going to put in my network. Does that make sense? Okay, so does everybody understand what networking, prospecting, and, and marketing is? Everybody knows them numbers? All right, so here's the reality. So if you're a real estate agent and you're just doing marketing, right, and you're you're not putting a system in place like this, you're constantly pushing the wheelbarrow up the hill. That makes sense. You're constantly trying to get business because you're not have a system in place where it's it's, it's twelve ways to bring a business. So when I when I when I'm talking to my my agents and I'm mentoring and, and and looking at this in a systematic way, if you have one spoke coming into your biz, and we'll call this the biz, and we'll call it a wheel, right? And that spoke goes away. What happens to your business? The wheel can't turn, right? So now we're going to fill these spots up, and here's the, here's, here's the important part of filling these spots up. If we're going to write something in one of these spots as a marketing tactic, a prospecting tactic, or a networking tactic, I don't want it to be what I do or just you do. I want it to be specific to your personality, okay? Because I'm not going to make 100 phone calls in the office, but I will go out and have a converse, 100 conversations in the office. Does that make sense? So what if... If you want longevity and you want to last in this business, past the statistics of eight and a half out of ten out of the business in two years, you need to put this model in place that fits your personality. Does that make sense? Because he's not going to be the person that's going to pull over and stop the guy at the yard sale and say, "Here, here, 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 here
but I listed a couple houses on yard sales recently. That makes sense because it was yard sale month. So as we're going through this, there's different personalities. We put out ideas, and then that's something that we can, I want to say, chunk down to see what that looks like in a, in a better uh, way. So it's something that you can implement. All right, so there's a lot of new agents in there, a couple seasons. Okay. So ideas for marketing. What's that look like? Facebook ads. Facebook ads, okay. A perfect scenario, right? So we're going to say Facebook for marketing. And try to do it in a systematic way. So the second page you guys have on here that is, as an example, is something you can use off as a daily checklist. So this is your map of what it should look like in a weekly or monthly thing. And then this is your daily, what it should look like. So Facebook marketing is one. What's another marketing statistic? Not statistic, but uh, plan, marketing plan. Instagram. Huh? Instagram. Instagram. We're going to put that right next to Facebook because it's uh, kind of social media based. Because I get campaigns and drips on email. Email. Her. Instagram. We got Instagram. No, Facebook. Not what else? Postcards. Just listed. Just listed. Just listed, just sold. This is one of the things that uh, Brooke and Phyllis are great at. What else? You do uh, like brochures, you know, if you want to go like, for example, the street, you take a few streets and you can send uh, like So door, door, door hangers? Yeah. Are we talking about? Okay, door hangers. All right, door hangers. So, I have, you said marketing, so I have in 22 business locations around Delaware County and Chester County, I have trifolds, which are little brochures that have my team and information on them. My dry cleaners, I'm probably the number one client for that dry cleaner. My dry cleaner bill is probably about $160 a month. Okay? You think if I go in there and ask her to put my brochures at, the, at her front desk, that she's going to say no? Absolutely not. You know why? Because I see that little stuff there. So me being a shy person, hey, by the way, I have these. Can I put these in your, in your front window, right? So that's marketing. Okay, so door hangers, uh, uh, local, what do I call them? Advertisements. Huh? Advertisements. Yeah. Pamphlets. Well, well, see, everybody's had a different idea of advertisement. They think just because they put something on Facebook, that's an advertisement. Placemats. Placemats. Placemats is a good one, okay? Where you guys, does anyone have placemats? I mean, <laughs> Springfield, Springfield. Everybody has my placemat. Where's Springfield Diner? Springfield Diner. Springfield Diner. That's great. I was just at one of the one of the diners in in, in, uh, in Market Sook, and they had uh, uh, one of the mortgage guys up there. Okay? Marketing. Come on, keep going. Some more ideas for marketing. Shopping carts. Shopping carts. Baseball field ads. Radio commercials. Billboard. Huh? Billboards, radio, yeah. billboards. Okay, so a lot of this stuff costs money. So you new, new agents, you need to think of ideas for marketing that don't cost money. Because just listed, just solds, they're sixty five dollars to hundred five hundred ten dollars a pop, right? Okay, and you don't have just listed, just solds. So you need to come up with marketing ideas. And these marketing ideas, these are like I said, these are ten thousand eight to ten thousand dollar ten thousand touches to one. So this doesn't have to be like this is every day. This is probably once a week. This is once or twice a month for your sales. Door hangers are probably once a quarter because you're not going to go out there and you're going to be yeah. Placemats are awesome. They're, I think, what's it, 400 bucks for placemats, mm -hmm. roughly? Shopping carts, you know, that's $2,300 to $4,000 for the shopping carts. And the baseball thing, I think that's like one time, I think it's around $1,100 from the last time I looked at it. Okay, so more marketing ideas. Um, golf tournaments, tees, or beverage carts. Sponsor a hole and beverage carts. Sorry, and baseball tournaments. I mean, uh, golf, golf carts. Okay. Sorry, I said baseball. So golf. Tournament. I'll just put golf stuff down there. Yeah. All right. What else? Um, uh, production, print, school plays, uh, programs. Okay. Preach and ad plays. Huh? School stuff. What? Fridge magnets. Fridge magnets, yeah. Magnets, fridge stuff. What else? Giveaways. 
Giveaways, where at? All of it. Just ripping it. Koozies, okay. magnets, um, and strings. Okay. So did anybody had did, did anybody come across right here? So you guys are doing some of this stuff, some of the, the experienced agents are doing this stuff. So the new agents, if any of this stuff stick out to you that you want to do? Because you're new to the business and you don't have a lot of money. Door hangers. Door hangers? I don't know how much I can talk about. Okay. So one of the things that's coming up this time of year is what? Food drive, right? Kel Keller Williams Realtor Wear, too. Like a hat, a shirt. Um... What is it? What's it? Flash they call that? Oh, flash. This is a lot of, that's one of the good ones that a lot of agents don't do. And I laugh about new agents, especially women. Like, there's so many things you can accessorize when you go to the gym or go to your mom's club. So, the, the reason I brought the, the great what? Mom's club. There is, there's a hundred of them. I wish I, you know, sometimes I wish I had a better engagement with some of the, some of the mom's groups out there. So, the reason we're having this class is I'm trying to give you guys ideas of so many different ways to bring a business. Because everybody has a different personality. Brooke's got kids now at home. So she has to think of different ways to add to this marketing list and add to this prospecting list because the networking went, went a little sideways, right? So now we got to get creative. So the, the women that, that say, well, I, I, don't, I have two kids, I get out of the house. You got to change it. You just got to adjust it. You got to drop back and punt and say, okay, what do I got to do now to keep business coming in? Okay, so we got Facebook. Now we're going to go back to um, okay. So let's just let's just call this. Uh, I want to add badge on the What'd you say? Can I read your badge? Yeah, Kelly. That's what we're talking about. Kelly oh, flashing and, oh. and gear. Um, uh, let's put just less than just souls on here. Postcards. Huh? Postcards. Okay. Yeah, you do postcards. Yeah, that's what you're calling postcards. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Now we're going to go to prospecting. This is where your numbers start to change and your business can literally, uh, your pipeline can get filled way faster. Okay? And it's a lot less money. Some of these things you can do marketing don't cost money. Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn stuff that we had a LinkedIn class the other day. Like that doesn't cost money. It costs time and it costs habit. That make, that make sense? Daily habit. Okay, prospecting ideas. This is where the agents that are not, no, not do not want to spend money can start engaging and get business right away. Open houses. Open houses. Open houses is pretty tough now because most stuff so What other ideas you got? Door knocking with her car. Door knocking. With her car. Yeah, door hangers. Um, how many people are doing door to door knocking? Door door door? I did do the door knocking. And this is where I say that the reason I'm having this class and having different personalities is because one person will door knock and the other person will never door knock. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you have to you have to fill this 12 spots. In. So the reason we're trying to not push the wheel back is we have 12 ways of business coming in. Does this wheel ever stop turning? Does business ever stop coming in? So you have to look at this as a map and create 12 different things for bringing in business. Some of them are weekly, some of them are monthly. I have one once a year, like the Victoria Festival, okay? It's once a year, but it gives me six deals every time I do it. That make sense? That's one of my face-to-faces. Right, more prospecting ideas. Uh, cold calling. Cold, cold, cold call, okay. Um, so your calls, this is where we we're talking about being real with yourself. If you're making calls, you shouldn't be marking that down as a check unless you're having that conversation, mm -hmm. right? And you were in one of my classes. How's that conversation go? Um, if I cold call, I call, hi, my name is Sam from Keller Williams, giving you a call today to talk about my services. If you or somebody knows something to buy, sell, rent, or invest in real estate. Okay, that's a check mark. Yeah. And how many people say yes to that? Uh, like, usually I do 20 calls a day and I'll usually at least get two leads. That's not that's bad. That's yeah. good. That's yeah. really good. I do that every day. What's the second part of that question that you can make sure you get almost a name or a referral at every single time? A name or a referral? Because I can guarantee if I asked anybody to give me their cell phone and I can call any five people out of their, out of their phone, I guarantee I'd get a, a referral. What is the next question behind it? 
and usually I ask them for their email address so I can add them to like a, see what's going on around them. What's the top six people to need a real estate agent? <laughs> Divorce attorneys. Oh, okay. Do you know anybody yeah. getting married? Do you know anybody who had baby? Okay. Correct. So Barb's chiming in because I think she was in the <laughs> tail, tail end of that class. Okay. So when you're prospecting, you're asking people for that question, whether it is right on the phone, whether it's a email, a text message, or, or whether it's an email. The top six people that need a real estate agent are, and then you go down the line, and every single person that you have that conversation with, unless they're mute and hiding in their parents' basements, will know somebody in that top six. You remember the top six? Huh? That's pretty common now. Right, yeah. Who knows the top six? Uh, you were in class. Getting married, divorce, married, baby. Um, okay, so we'll role play again. Okay, so sorry. thank you for taking my call. What is your first name? Here? Sam. Sam. Thanks for taking my call today. I know you really can't think of anybody off the top of your head, but I got a question for you. The top six people in the real estate agent are, and if you know anybody in these categories, can you give me their name? Because I can swear I can help them out. If you know anybody who's recently got engaged, put your hand up. If you know anybody in these categories. Nobody's recently getting divorced. Okay? Nobody's recently gotten pregnant and locked up. Maybe possibly these better Well, there's a nice way to say do you, it. <laughs> do you know anybody's recently got all the kids off to college and empty nest? Okay? Nobody's recently lost a loved one. Nobody's recently uh, got a job promotion and probably moving out of that rental. Right? Mm -hmm. If you ask that question, especially to the people that you're comfortable with, there's not a chance that they don't know so much. Thank you for thinking of them. I have their name so I can reach out to them. And I'll make sure that they know that you, you connected us so I can help them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That is the best prospecting question you can ever ask. I will send a text message out. Hey, Greg, I need two minutes of your time. I think you can call me. Okay? And they call me back and I have that question and I guarantee I get a name. Or I say, hey, the pandemic's over. I'm looking to drum, drum up some business for the holiday season. And I need you to think of somebody that could possibly help. And here's the top six people that need a real estate agent. Do you think that somebody's going to say, I don't know anybody? Or, out if I put 50 people in a class, one out of 49 is not going to know someone in that category. Does that make sense? Okay? That is a serious prospecting question that would help anybody get business over. Okay? All right. So calls. Try to be very, very... Um, Aggressive on that, on that asking for for referrals question. What else? Messaging, Facebook messaging specifically. I'd love that you said that because Facebook uh, DM. Okay, so Facebook and Facebook DM is definitely a big difference because that is considered prospecting. This is considered marketing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Your conversion on your DMs or reaching out to people are probably what one out of ten. Of having a, a real real estate conversation, probably even more than that. Yeah, but that's good numbers. But you have to look at it like that. You have to look at it as Sam saying asking for business and getting real with your your, your check marks. Because if you're having twenty conversations, you'll get one deal. What else? Prospecting. Handwritten cards. Yep, love cards. Cards is on my daily to do list. I'm not sure if it's on that sheet or not. I teach a whole class on this daily discipline. The cards are my number one. Okay? I remember Jim was going to a listing appointment. This is when he first came over. He's like, I got a listing appointment on Tuesday. He's like, Wednesday. I'm like, send her a card. He was the only person that sent that lady a card. And like, she was impressed because she was having three or four conversations. Remember that? Mm -hmm. All right. What else? What else is your prospect you want? Circle prospecting. Circle prospecting? Who said that? Circle prospecting? Is that what it's called when you call um, after a house has been sold around the neighborhood yep. and asking if um, you know anybody else? Like yeah. Have you done that? <laughs> so, what do we, I guess we can call that circle prospecting. Um, I'm going to put it up as just list, just sold calls. A lot of there was there was there's quite a few agents that do that after L agents houses sell. Uh, new agents were were doing it in here for for experienced agents that, that follow that were selling houses and following up. 
I don't. I haven't seen anybody do that in a systematic way. Though. What else you got? Anybody see my Facebook post this morning for the spy bedroom coming up? Mm -hmm. I'll show you the sign from yesterday. That was before I got there. And I took it with the camera. I took it with my big camera. So yesterday when I got there, <coughs> guess what was on the front yard? For sale by owner. For sale by owner. Oh, there it is right there. Okay. Coming soon. For sale by owner. All right? So for sale by owner. Is they still out there? Yep. Yep. Yeah. How many people are calling? Kathleen McGilley just got a listing. I met with her probably three weeks ago. She asked me if I could take her to lunch to get some listing discipline. Um, she was having a conversation with Amory. He said, Jason's really, really good at listing. He listed like 150 properties in one year. Give him a call. I took her to lunch. And I gave her my FISBO script. She called FISBOs the next day. It was our first time ever. She goes, I got a listing. Okay? So the FISBOs are still out there, even though they're selling. But here's the script. Who's afraid to call FISBO? Anybody afraid? Who's called FISBOs before? Any luck? You hate them? Love them? Uh, that's mixed. Yeah. Okay. It depends. And I remember when I said call FISBO, she, she's like, oh. So here's the FISBO script. I'm calling about the property, but I'm not calling to sell your property. Statistically, everybody that moves usually moves within 10 miles of where they're selling. If this is true, I'm one of the number one buyer's agents in your area, and I want to help you buy your next house. Because everybody else that's calling is calling to help them sell the house or be a listing agent, right? This person was like, what? You want to help me buy a house? Yeah. Me and my daughter have a team, and we're, we are very, very aggressive buyer's agents, and blah, blah, blah. 45 minutes later, she has a listing appointment. Does that make sense? Because you're trying to have a conversation with them. And then what happens is, okay, well, where do you sell? Well, I have a Delaware license. I'm from Garner Valley. You're selling a house in Garner Valley, blah, blah, blah. So next thing you know... And then she goes, well, by the way, how's the house sale going? And do you know that you need documentation so you don't get sued? Because 70% of the FISBOs in Pennsylvania get sued because they don't have the proper documentation. Would you like me to provide that documentation for free for you? I can drop it off. Does that make sense? Now you're getting in front of that person. It's the belly belly thing, right? That's the fastest way to get business. So the conversation, she always say it's called the backdoor technique, but her having a conversation about being a buyer's agent. Next thing you know, we're on the phone 45 minutes. How easy is that to call FISBO to make you more comfortable rather than calling them to list a house like everybody else is? Does that make sense? Okay. What else? Prospecting. Because FISBO's got their hand up, like this $460,000 property I got yesterday. They said to us, I know, but what about FISBO? It is called FISBO. I don't know what they are. What else? Prospect. We need more ideas for the for the agents that have different personalities in here. Expires. Yeah, expires. Expires. Yeah. yeah. Expires. There's an agent in our office doing expires now. I just listed two properties from expires. I think it was. I think he's going back a year and a half. John Nisley is really good at expires. What else? You guys want to move on to networking? Because that's what I'm going to chew this up. That's all we have for prospecting? Huh? What? FISBO is super good idea. FISBO is super? That FISBO thing works really well. You'll be, you'll be blown away how many conversations you have. That's all we got for prospecting? Okay. Uh, join clubs. Huh? Join clubs. Clubs. Clubs, organizations. You have to be very intentional with that. Mm -hmm. So, we'll do clubs down here. What else can we have? Opens. Sit down the bar. Huh? Yeah, sit at the bar. Yes. Anything. The bar works. The bar works for me. Me too. 
too. I remember I was mentoring, mentoring Steve Ever when he first came over, and he's like kind of like a held back guy. And I'm like, dude, just ask the dude, ask the dude how next, how his soup is next to He's like, put his head down. He goes, do I really have to? I'm like, I'm here I'm trying to mentor you, get you out of the show. He listed his sister's that he listed that lady's sister's house, that guy's sister's house, like three months later. How's the soup? He's like, God damn it, that works. <laughs> we're just trying to have conversations. You understand? So now we're going to go into networking and face to face. All right. Um, getting out. So every uh, Wednesday, I used to go out for lunches with different clients, or or business to business, or somebody that was possibly in the business or somebody that was a referral agent. It was home inspectors, it was uh, termite guys, it was L agents, uh, it was camaraderie. I remember one of the ones was we went to Paramore at the Wayne Hotel, it was with Jake Penny and a couple of investors. There was a bunch of guys there. I'm like, listen, there's business everywhere. Well, you just got asked. And the waitress came up. I'm like, by the way, do you know anybody buying, selling, or investing in real estate that you know? She goes, I just got approved yesterday. And he, these guys looked at me like, did you know her? I'm like, no, I don't know her. But that's the questions or the vibe or energy you can put out there. So that's why we're trying to instill different habits because now there's 10 people in this class, 80 is are not gonna be here in two years. That makes sense? So instilling somebody's daily habits and trying to get you guys to do what's <clears throat> personal that you're gonna have longevity with, is what we're, we're, we're trying to get you guys to get creative. Does that make sense? Because you're not going to have that conversation at lunch with the waitress. I will. So if you're not having that conversation with the waitress, what do you do? Emails and Facebook that Brooke is doing because she has her kids most of the time. Does that make sense? And you got to do it in a systematic way. So lunches, what else on the network? And here's the thing. If you don't have business and you do any of these four that you're going to add to your list, you literally fill your pipeline in a week. I know that's because I had no listings last month, okay? Because I was going through some emotional stuff, and now I have 17 listings coming up in like a week. Does that make sense? I'm listed listed five yesterday. I have three appointments at the end of the day today. From this bottom line, Does that make sense? Okay. So let's fill your bottom lines because if you don't have business and you fill these 12 spots, you'll have business. So come up with some more. What's your network? Post a buyer seminar. Huh? Post a buyer seminar. Okay. Buyers. What do you? What do they call? What do they? Um, first time. Seminar? First time home yeah, buyer. First time buyer seminar. Okay. Um. Here's what I gotta say because like, um, uh, what you said something about uh, clubs. Yes. You can go almost any event if you have intentions off the bat of what that event or what your results are gonna look like. Does that make sense? I remember going to a ton of real estate events, real realtor events, and in the beginning, other realtors would make fun of me. Like, why are you going to a realtor event? I'm like, well, because they don't do what I do. Like, what do you mean? So I would go to other realtors events and have conversations with them because if Brooke sells a house to, well, she's a, she's on the same lines as I am. So just just say, she, Beth Sandberg just called me about 20 minutes ago. If I go to a realtor event, and I'm rubbing elbows with Beth Sandberg, and she works in the main line. Do you think she's going to go to Chester or Marcus Hook to sell an investment property? No. Hey, Beth, by the way, I got these listings coming up that your clients might be interested in, that you just sold that million dollar house. Do they have a portfolio yet? No. Okay. Well, here's my card, because I got a, a triplex that they might be interested in for some mailbox money. Does that make sense? So when I'm going to a realtor's event, I have intentions of what that looks like. I want to share my card and what I do with two or possibly three or realtors before I leave that event. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if you're going to put networking events down, because a lot of times I'll go, when I was in the, in the, in the, in the office a lot helping out new agents, I would say, what are you doing? I'm making calls. Okay, what's that look like? What calls you? Because somebody said calls up here. If you put your map down correctly and make your calls, you shouldn't have to make a hundred calls. Because if you're making the calls correctly because your first five calls you should be to know. And this is a whole other map I have that's on another sheet for my daily, daily, uh, my, yeah, I say 20 daily checklists. Your first five calls you should be to who? People who know you and trust you. Right. Core advocates or past clients, right? And your next five calls should be what? The ones you're already nurturing that are on the hook, right? So there's 10 calls you knocked out right there. 
Out of them 10, you should already have a new piece of business or appointment set. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then the next 10 calls should be the first two after that, your number 11 and number 12, should be your business to business. They should be people that you're already in bed with or want to get in bed with, whether it's a termite guy or whether it's a foreign guy. My foreign guy just gave me a listing yesterday because I text him three times in the past month because people were getting their hardwood floors done this time of year. Okay, school's over, blah, 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 whatever's going on. But hey, Ed, here's my, here's so-and-so. Hey, Ed, Ed, now Ed's texting me back. Does that make sense? Getting off track, what was I talking about? Oh, so number number 11 and number 12 call should be to, to business to business, right? And number 13 and 14, that should be to a FISBO, okay? 15 and 16 should be to expire. Now what do we got left? Three? One's gratitude. Thank somebody for that day. One's a card. Now we got one left. That's agent to agent. You should be reaching out to an agent every day in some kind of way. Whether it's the camaraderie. Hey, um, what's the last one I reached out and we got something under contract? Um, oh, Kathleen McGill. Uh, Kathleen, hey Kathleen, just checking in with you, senior Facebook toast, blah, 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 congrats on the vacation. And she's like, oh, that townhouse I got coming up is, is, is ready for the market. And now I have somebody interested in buying. Does that make sense? So if you reach out to one agent, that's the whole reason Jim's here today. I was reaching out to one agent a day. I reached out to Jim and said, we need to talk about <coughs> other sources of income. Real, new real estate agents in here are looking at one income. They're looking at commissions, right? You're new, right? You're looking at commissions. Sam, you're looking at commissions. Mm -hmm. New back there, right? Real estate, real estate commissions, right? That's where your money's at. In the long run, <clears throat> you should be looking at your real estate commissions, your profit share, your partner shares in your insurance, your partner shares in titles, and then partner shares in a market center. That's five sources of income you can have in less than three years, right? That should blow your mind as far as your career and what you want. Your life to look like. Does that make sense? Because four of them are passive. They call a mailbox money, right? Jim's like the perfect example. In less than two and a half years, he added what three streams of income to his income. I remember having this conversation with Brooke when me and Steve went through their open house with Brooke and her mom. You need to look at the other sources of income also, because as you're growing your business, there's other sources of income that you guys can have, and you're not even thinking about. It. I think I went over here we said. Good. All right. So we're back to network. So what's it look like? Weddings and funerals. Weddings and funerals. Interesting. Huh? You have funerals too? I get business every year. Like <laughs> Weddings and funerals. I look at that. Uh, I call it, let's say, we'll say life and deaths. Okay. Huh? Okay. Because when I talk about people, the businesses, I talk about life and bet businesses. Anybody that has a business for life and bets is somebody you should be reaching out to and partner up with them. So give me an example of a life and bet business. Divorce attorney. Divorce attorney. Funeral right? directors. Yeah. Funeral directors. Labor and delivery nurse. Labor and delivery nurse. <laughs> it's funny, I remember, I remember it was like when Grace, when we were going to get something like Grace said, when Babies Are Us went to Springfield. And my ex-wife was like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm going to talk to the lady at the, the, uh, the registry desk. I gave her a, business, a handful of business cards and said, listen, anybody you refer me to, you know, she was young. I said, what's your favorite restaurant? She said Sullivan's or something like that. And I said, I'll give you a $300 gift card for anybody you send me. And Donna Cardone didn't miss your And, uh, yes. <laughs> and you're recording, so nobody on that video heard so, that. So, but that networking out. with somebody in life events. So, cake, cake places, bakeries, florists, they are all people that are life events. And guess what the top six that we just talked about earlier? They're life events, right? So if somebody's getting pregnant, somebody's getting divorced, you know, life events is when that happens. When they're having a baby, they're getting a cake. You know, so team up with life event, um, life event stuff. So, Pat, let's, let's break that down. What's that look like as far as? No, it's just my event, going to those events. Going to the events. Working the events. But you're purposeful, right? So you have an intention and purposeful when you're, when you're going to them, right? So same thing what Brooke said about the flare. When you, guys, when you guys are leaving the office, if you have intent to have a conversation with somebody or you want to get in front of somebody and network, that's when you wear that name tag. That's when you wear the hat, which needs to happen all the time. 
I remember one of the, the funniest ones was uh, walking into the Acme over here at um, uh, in Media. And I'm walking in, this guy's walking by, I'm like, hey. And he's like, stops. He's like, can I know you? I'm like, no, if you're going to. He's laughing, but I, I sold that guy's house like a week later. Just by just by being friendly and happy. And I think I had a, a what you call it, a Calorian golf, golf shirt on that day. You know what I mean? So that's a vibe too. But right, more networking stuff. What do you got? Client events. Huh? Client events. Client events. Um, we had we had a buyers buyers uh, practice on that. No, I'm talking about client events, past oh, clients. Client parties, like yep. Jane Rivers does, right? Yep. Um, client parties. So, what? Have you have you had any yet? I have. You have? I know Brooke has had. Mm -hmm. We don't want to. Like that. Yeah, I am at the Springfield Country Club. Okay. That's good. The new agents here, you got to strive for that. So when you do be some successful and you're making some money, client events are absolutely one of the best ways to retain business company. Yeah. Does Although that make you guys like can rent a pavilion at the um, Ridley Creek State Park and do barbecue yep. or like picky foods and stuff like that, like you don't have to spend a lot of money on a client party and have like the clients and their families come Especially out. Especially if they have young kids, they like to be outside. Absolutely. I'm hosting a pumpkin carving this Saturday. So I have, I don't know, 25 pumpkins, all the kids' neighborhoods are coming in. I set tables up at the clubhouse. The club, they give me the clubhouse for free. You know, I don't even pay for it. So we're having pumpkin carving in my community this weekend. Make sense? What else? Networking. Pop pies. Huh? Pop pies. You know, giving mumps to your yeah. to pass by. Oh, pop pies. Pop pies. Pop pies? Pop pies? Pop pies? Like they're called. Hey, here's Popeyes. a mom. Great to see you. Have a great day. Bye, Jason. Here's what do they call it? Pop. Pop. P O P. Pop eyes. Like you just stopping by. Never heard of it. Oh, I pop like oh, that. Pop eyes. Yeah. Pop eyes. Okay. Pop eyes. I never heard it called that, but I got it. Popeyes. Yeah. Yeah. I did the mums. I dropped off the mums this week. So we have a couple things up here that I want to talk about. So we have fridge magnets and we have network. Okay. So the reason that this conversations are five to one. And this is 20 to 1, and this is 10 to 1, because of relationships and, and building rapport with each other. So, Sam, you set a refrigerator magnet every year for the past three years on a calendar, blah, 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 but you don't door knock and you don't have a face to face. Who's winning that conversation? Whoever door knocks. Correct. Okay. So that's why it's important to, to get in front of your clients and do some belly to belly and build rapport. What, what other what other networking stuff do we have? E and I, LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn's probably more prospecting and and, mm -hmm. and and marketing rather than face to face. Unless you go to a LinkedIn event, there ain't been there hasn't been a LinkedIn event around here in a long time. So th thinking about that, um, meetup meetup.com has six thousand events just in Delaware County alone. Like, I laugh when people say I, I don't I don't know where to network at. So if you're being purposeful and you're doing going into a bet with attention, you're gonna come out with, with with success, right? Any other networking stuff? Or it's at B and I. B and I. B and I's are great if you have the time to uh what you call it, dedicate to them. There's a couple other places. Um, I actually created a couple networking events uh, and then sold it off. One was in Chad's Ford. And one was in uh, the, the Carabas in Westchester, uh, uh, Building Bridges Networking Event, which had great success before pandemic. And then they, they I let somebody else take it over and they tried to keep it going, but they didn't have the camaraderie to keep it going. What's BNI? Business Networking International. Uh, it's Business Networking International, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So BNI is, is a group that you have to go to I think it's once a week, right? Mm -hmm. um, you have to get voted in. Once a month. Uh, once a week. Once a week. Once a week. Once a week. Wow. Yeah. We and I are pretty, pretty intense. And realtors are the number one person that they, they get in there because realtors can get the most referrals. And everybody wants to be. Yeah. Which is which is hilarious because you new agents coming into real estate need to realize that you can build your business very fast by referrals. Which you know and they, we've got a couple minutes left because. You guys are not participating in this as much as I thought, especially with networking. And we can jump into how many referrals are in a deal. Okay? So if you have a seller deal and you have a buyer deal, there is three to five referrals in every single deal. 
right? So real simple. The experience ages to speak out loud, so we don't have to wait for the whole time. So, Brooke, seller, where's the first? Give me three or five referrals right off the bat. What'd you say? As a seller? You have a seller right now. Well, give me three or five referrals, and you can hand that to their seller. sister. Home inspection, like go to a home inspection and meet their family. Uh, I'm talking about we'll give them referrals for for the seller. Give but them, I'll, I'll, I'll start. So we have a seller, right? So you're the seller. And we have a buyer. You have three to five, three to five referrals in each one. So a seller. I have a moving company, right? Oh, you mean ways that we can give our yeah. client mm. a referral? So we have a moving company. Uh, they have a painter. They have to paint the paint oh, the ceilings see. before before they which we call before they sell. They have concrete. Concrete. Everyone needs concrete. Now. Contractors. Okay. <laughs> need a plumber. Plumber. <laughs> Clean out. Clean, Clean out. out. That's a good one. Cleaning. Cleaning. Stager. Stager. Yeah. Cleaning. What else? Stager. Stager. Stage. Stage. all boards. She's saying them. Right. Yes. So there's there's just a couple we can rattle off, but the list goes on and on and on. So as you're building your business, you need to team up with people. So you want to network. All you got to do is once a week go on your Facebook and say, Hey, I'm looking for any one of these items, whether it's a cleaner, a hairdresser, a landscaper. I'm looking to team up with somebody for my 2023 year, and now you're starting networking with local businesses. That make sense? So as you're building your, your, your business, start building your network also that you can reach out to because if I make first the first five calls to people I'm already doing business with, what's the fastest way to get to get a referral back, right? So now we have buyers. What do you got? Loan officer, right? Loan guy, inspector, what else? Family members. Huh? They're family members. No, no, this, this is for contractors. Uh, contractors also. Contractors also. What also else? Movers. Huh? Movers. movers. Painters. Plumber. Right. Plumb. Paint. I mean, the list goes on and on and on, right? So I just started doing a little short. Sorry, I know you're on the time crunch. Um, catering. I've been offering to help with some of the food for their housewarming party if they invite me. And that has been like a yeah, huge I do that. Hit. That's phenomenal. It's awesome. Yeah. And then they're bragging about you the entire party, not only because you were the all-star agent, but you also supplied some of the food for their party. And I actually have it. a form on that that you give out at like, like, uh, closing and towards the end of closing that has that same example. I'm not sure where you got it from, but the, Gizzy, the Gizzy team used to throw parties. Up to 50 people, we provide alcohol and food. So we go out and buy two big bottles of red, two big bottles of white. You know, sometimes they ask for champagne, and then we, we hooked up with a Big Bad Barbecue out of Aston, and we would get a, a, a brisket tray, a corn on the cob, the mac and cheese, and we'd go in there and set it up, put a little welcome to Sally and Skip's house, you know, the, you know, the, the Gizzy team has provided uh, beverages and food, blah, 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 here's a sign-in sheet, here's some business cards, okay? It works. And here's the thing, if you offer it, it's exciting, and they talk about it. And if you, well, here's the, the craziest thing about it. If you offer it to 15 people, one person actually takes you up for it. Yeah, I get very few. I get about one in every 10. That's yeah. all I get to take yeah. me up for. I mean, I, and I spend a lot of money. And they Usually yeah. they say no. Yeah, I usually get one, one or two at the most. 200, 200 to $350 is what is yeah. on average. But it's worth it if they do it. But even if you offer it, it's still something that they talk about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, out there, out the Perez is over by over by you. It's a, the last one of the last ones I, I, I did. It's amazing. We went to uh, I went I went out and got another second round of champagne. All right, so that's another way that you can network. So if you don't know where to build your network out, the people you can call and be real with is these are really really simple. Buyers and buyers and sellers. You have three to five referrals in every single deal. Make sense? So. Who has filled their map out? I filled my top, not the spokes. So again, if we had 12 <laughs> sources of business coming in, <laughs> it never, the wheel never stops turning, right? So try to be strategic and fill out your 12 ways to bring in business. Because that's, what I think, you know, when I'm mapping my year, I'm looking at that and see what I'm going to do. Some of these networking events don't have to be weekly or quarterly. Like I said, one of them for me is once a year. I had the Ridley Park Victoria Festival I do, I set a table up. I'm signing up for the Aston Community Day for next year because somebody asked me 
to, to get involved with that. Put table out there and put you put you know t-shirts out there. So there's two things I actually put on there, or I might split one of them so I don't get greedy with myself. So I just fill the spot with two vents. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So if you do this, map out your your lead generation and fill your spokes, business can never stop turning. Good. Mm -hmm. All right. Questions. <laughs> Questions, comments, and ahas for the last five minutes. Yeah, from this side of the room. Especially if you're, if you're comfortable talking to somebody, if you bring out that top six, you'll absolutely get, get somebody's name. As the FIFO is to be their buyer agent instead of listing their home, but also to help them with the documentation. Yep, there's a, a ton of stuff that they'll need if you get a chance to have that con yeah. conversation. With them. Then also, what are the 20 calls that you were signing against? Hmm. I know two were business to business, one was agent to agent. So here's the thing also. So my teammates uh, slash the, the agents I was mentoring coming up uh, to be successful, we would sit down and go over that 20 because, you know, statistically 20 phone calls a day gets you one appointment, right? All right, 20 prospects. So we would map that out and see what that looks like. So my end is five past, I have five past clients, five new clients, which are your people you're nurturing. So that's 10 right there. 11 and 12 is your business to business. So that's your contractors and your people that are your core advocates. Okay. Um, FISBOs or expireds. So that could be two or four, depending on if you're in like, expireds are tough nowadays. So you can, yeah. you can do your FISBOs, okay? okay? One gratification, one card, one agent to agent. Got it. Okay? Just think about if you did that daily. And that's a whole I love that idea. That's a whole other class that, 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 I, that I, I helped some agents with. Just think about that daily. If you reach out to one agent a day, one gratification a day, one car a day, and two contractors a day, there's your business right there. And here's the thing. You don't have to have long conversations. So if I have that sheet, which I have that 20 sheet that's on my desk if anybody wants a copy of it, and actually, that's what Kathleen McGillan and her daughter are doing now. They're doing that, and they're just, they, she texts me the other day. She's like, holy shit, this has been life-changing for me and my daughter. So, um, what was I getting back to? So, that sheet, really now it takes me about, at the fastest, about 25 minutes to about 45 minutes to get that sheet done. Because most of the time, I'm just touching them. I'm texting texting or emailing. Hey, hey, Brooke, I was following up with the other day conversation. Did you get a chance to look at any of the houses I sent you? So that's, that's, that's a nurture, okay? Right. And then the past ones is usually, I just go into my Google calendar, I can usually have two or three people's birthdays that already pop up. Sally, happy birthday. Happy home sale anniversary. So a lot of times it's just text message or I'll do uh, slide dial. You guys know what slide dial is? So slide dial is a voice where I can leave somebody a voicemail by, by calling your phone without ringing. Because you really want to be a personable like touch rather than just text message hey happy birthday so if I'm trying to get my list done I'll say hey Sam happy birthday just wanted to touch base with you sorry I missed you give me a call we can grab lunch together when you get a chance I just made a better impression than just text messages happy right. birthday right but I didn't have to spend 40 minutes on the phone before I got my list done but the chances of her texting me back is way better than me just just putting in touch out there does that make sense so you can get through that 20 touches pretty fast. Yeah, okay. Okay, what else? I realized I'm not doing a lot. 
Well, I mean, here's, I mean, even like, the, like I was, like I was saying, I remember your mom specifically going, <coughs> having an epiphany, like, think about, think about filling 12 spots, that's it. And we're not, we're not telling you to do 30 things, we're not telling you to do 50 things, we're not even telling you to do 20 things every day or every week. We're just telling you to figure out, map 12 things out that you're doing to bring business in that's going to pull the wheelbarrow rather than push the wheelbarrow. So, like I said, I'm... You know, my events, the Aston community today and, and the, the fair, that's one. You know, my, the, the Facebook stuff, you know, that Brooke does, that's one for her for, for marketing. And then she does Facebook prospecting. She just filled two. You know, Sam, which one are you going to, tell me one you're going to implement, whether it's marketing, prospecting, or network. Um, networking, I want to get more purposeful and creative, whether it's more, uh, doing like rotary, going to township uh, building and like introduce myself, bring donuts, going to the courthouse and working on my referral network. And, and here, here's what I gotta say about networking, because if anybody wants to make a comment about networking, like they would literally make fun of me that Jason can't go to the bathroom without, without networking. <laughs> so no matter what you guys do, like when you say, hey, I'm making calls or I'm going to networking, but having an intention or purpose behind what you're going to do that that event is going to create results. Mm -hmm. Like there's all kinds of stuff going on. You know, Brooke may mention putting flair on or KW stuff. Like you can literally go to Lynn Orchards this afternoon to the beer garden with a Kellen and Williams hat on and list the damn property. I mean, what are you going to do that? Are you going to put something on? Are you going to go purposeful and say, you know, I'm going to go to Lynn Orchards at the, at the beer garden and I want to have a conversation with real estate. That's how it happens. It doesn't happen like, oh, I'm going to go networking. Because you can go to networking events all you want, but if you don't say, hey, I'm gonna have three conversations and do my cam card, because my, my thing is like, I wanna, I wanna do my cam, I wanna my, send my cam card out three times before I do this event. That's a purpose. That's, that's going with intention, doesn't have it. So many times my fiance goes out with Jason, their friends, and he comes to him, he's like, hey, Jason found me a property. And like, our thing is, is like, whoever brings the property, that's who you buy it with. And like, like it's, and I'm totally fine with it, but like, because we wouldn't have the property if somebody didn't bring it to us. But it's funny because like, you can literally get business from anywhere. It doesn't matter. Like, doesn't matter at all. Don't be afraid to ask for it. And, and the reason I get goosebumps like talking about this class is because I want everybody to bring their personality into the business because there's a thousand different ways to get business. Like, like I said, there's some people are mute and they want to sit on their computer and send emails out. That's fine. But you got to send 10,000 emails out almost a week to get three appointments. Okay, does that make sense? But if you're like me and, and the networking, like I wrote, she's mentioned the bar. I'd rather go sit at the bar, whether I'm drinking or whether I'm eating soup. Like I was at Ashley's the other day. I like stopping there. They have these um, black and ahi uh, CO2 and things. And you know, and now I'm, I'm selling somebody a house. That makes sense? But I go there with intention. Like I want to have a conversation about real estate before I leave here. And I go in there, you know, whatever you want to call the, the, the uh, your, your creating that energy but you have to go into the networking events with that intention of purpose and that's where you're going to get the results at. and there's so many different one of the things out there networking events it's insane but that's where your fastest conversion five to one so if you don't have business and you want business real simple figure out four things that you're going to put in your networking map and and, and, and if you want to chunk it down i'll help you guys chunk that down because they'll put something in there like you know, Rotary Club. Okay, well, you can join a Rotary Club all you want, but if you're not engaging and putting in the systematic way and breaking it down into smaller chunks, you're not going to have results. Does that make sense? So everybody's going to have 12 things that they're going to hand Barb that's going to map their Barb will be in here. I want to see it. Cool. Well, thanks, everybody. Thanks, Jason. Thanks,